Now NASA is launching a spacecraft today. Its mission is to a potentially dangerous asteroid called Bennu. Well, if everything goes as planned, the spacecraft will eventually return to Earth with material from the asteroid, which has actually been in our solar system for 4.5 billion years. And joining us to talk about the mission is CBS News space consultant Bill Harwood. He's actually at the Kennedy Space Center. Looks like he's joining us from space. It does. No, he's here on Earth. <laughs> Your capabilities are incredible, Bill. <laughs> well, tell well, us. It's a nice backdrop anyway. It's it really nice. is. What's the goal of this mission? Well, you kind of put your finger on it. They, they really want to collect a sample from material that was left over from the birth of the solar system four and a half billion years ago. Now, the neat thing about going to an asteroid, unlike meteorites that occasionally fall to Earth, this material hasn't been touched in all of that 4.6 billion years. It's pristine material. They're hoping they can find organic compounds. A lot of scientists believe that, you know, the amino acids, some of those organics that went into the formation of life on Earth, may have come to Earth from asteroids and comets in the distant past. So they're trying to get a sense of just what was available in the very beginning and study that. I think it's a, it's a really remarkable mission if they can pull it off and it's not going to be easy. It is remarkable and this is a first for the United States but the European Space Agency has done something similar, please correct me if I'm wrong, and was able to find organic type material um, on the Philae comet and just what does that mean? You know, people always wonder if, if these missions are worth the cost and the expense, you know, taxpayer money. What does right. this mean for our understanding of the universe, of our origins, if in fact this mission finds more organic material? Well, that's really, it's really two questions here because the Rosetta mission that you're talking about, the European Space Agency's mission to a comet, did identify some organic compounds, but the difference here is they did that remotely. Uh, this spacecraft is actually going to bring the material back to Earth, and there's no way to duplicate the kind of analysis you can do in laboratories on Earth with the limited instruments that are on board a spacecraft. So it's going to shed a lot more light into exactly what was present four and a half billion years ago. And there's a lot of questions about how did the Sun and Earth form from this big cloud of gas and dust that somehow came together back in the distant past. What were the raw materials or the building blocks of that solar system, and how was it distributed? So by studying this particular asteroid, they're going to gain a lot of insight into that. Plus, as you mentioned at the top, it's a potentially dangerous asteroid. One of their experiments is studying how sunlight can very subtly affect the trajectory of asteroids so they can learn how to better predict when one might be headed our way. So tell us, the journey to Bennu will actually take two years. How is NASA going to monitor that spacecraft during the time? You know, this is a really interesting mission. Like you say, it's going to take two years to get there. Then they're going to spend two years mapping the asteroid in unbelievable detail. And then two years after they arrive is when they actually try to get the sample from the surface. And then they have to wait for the comet, I mean the asteroid and the Earth, to get back in the right relative position to come home. So they won't get back until 2023. So it's a, it's a seven-year mission. But throughout all of that, they'll use NASA's Deep Space Network. Uh, this is a system of antennas in Spain, California, and Australia with gigantic antennas that can pick up the signals from the spacecraft. They can send commands to it. They'll get pictures back from it. So they'll be in touch with it the whole way. Very cool stuff. And I know NASA will be publishing as much of those images in real time as possible and sharing it on social media. Absolutely. Bill Harwood joining us from the Kennedy Space Center, always with his head in the clouds. <laughs> Thanks so much.